Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Cup of Joe with Joe and Joe Podcast. I am your host, Joe, and with me as always is my wonderful co-host, Joe. Oh boy. For episode one, we have caffeine. For episode two, we have alcohol. What drug's gonna be for episode three? Find out next. <laughs> I love I love the message you're promoting for everyone listening. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, drugs. And That's what one Joe's about. And I'm wearing a Dare T-shirt. Ooh, how ironic! <laughs> it has it has um, it has Canada Canada Canada. It's a cure. It's cool. I'm hip. Everyone knows that you're super hip whenever you gotta uh, clarify that you are, in fact, hip. It's like, no, 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 don't worry. Like, have you ever been to, like, a social gathering show, and you're, like, hanging out with your friends, you're having a good time, like, the stranger of the party comes up to you, like, someone you don't know from a different friend group, and he comes up, and he starts talking to you a little bit, and it's kind of weird, and everyone's kind of just, like, doing the thing, like, no one really wants to speak up and say, hey, go away, we're vibing over here, um, and, like, no one wants to be that person. But then he just kind of, he's reading the room and he goes, yeah, no, I get it, guys, but don't worry, I'm hip. And then everyone feels way more comfortable around that guy, you know? You know that feeling, Joe? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Joe, think think about our first day in New Zealand. <laughs> we made a great, we made a great friend. <laughs> uh, okay. No names will be said. Comic books. <laughs> no, I don't think it really matters, but yeah. Um, come on books. So today it's going to be a little bit different because, uh, I had three books that I, uh, had the pleasure of reading and, uh, Jose over there didn't have anything to read. So it's going to be kind of, uh, interesting getting this little, uh, banter going on back and forth. I think I know how I want to do this though, Joe. I'm going to ask you to like, in the first, for like 30 seconds, try and give me like a, a synopsis of what you think the issue is was about and like tackled and stuff like that and then i'll tell you how right you were by actually going over some of the things that happened in them yeah i think that sounds wonderful okay so we got three books we're gonna start off with uh noctera number four so joe as fast as you can what do you think happened in noctera numero those trace quattro quattro okay well in Noctera, there, you know, she's doing the drive and she's doing the truck and she gets a fight with the dude. They start fighting. The truck blows up. People die. Murder. Um, she ends up beating it up, beating this guy up. The guy says, you don't know your history. And she goes, I know my history. They fight some more. There's a turtle in this. Don't worry about him. They fight some more. And she says, you don't know your history. And he's like, oh, fuck, you're right. And then they end up stop fighting, and they realize they actually should be friends. Hmm. Okay. Fascinating. So she doesn't really fight anyone in this issue. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. Um, but th you did. Uh, there was something in there where you like the truck blow. The truck doesn't blow up, but the truck was damaged in the last issue. So now it's like it can't hold a charge anymore. So it does die. Doesn't blow up, but it does die. Um, but that happens towards the like the latter half of the of the book. And there is some history in this mm. where she's kind of talking about her history. She starts off the book being like, "Okay, so um, here's what happened in the past," where she's talking about her uh, and M, her brother, how they had to lock their parents away in their house because they had transformed into shades or whatever, uh, and. They were like, we have to keep them in there, and we're probably going to have to kill them. And Emma's like, no, let's not kill our parents. Let's just leave because maybe we could find a way to cure them and then come back. You know, and being real hopeful in their little children and all their hope and whatever. Um, and so they end up doing that. Uh, but then you flash back to the present where it's like Emma himself is becoming a shade because he's been infected. He was in the dark too long. And now, um, what's her name? I can't remember what her actual name is. I heard a call sign that was Sundog. Sundog is trying to, you know, find a way to save her brother. Uh, she ends up finding a sun lamp from one of the outposts uh, that's able to, you know, keep the infection transformation out of the fuck at bay for a little bit longer. And so 
she, the little girl, not the grandpa that was with the little girl, because the grandpa is currently uh, strapped to the roof of the evil dude's car and transforming into a monster and just saying, kill me, as he's driving down the road in the darkness, which is a horrific sight. Um, but don't feel too bad for him. I should feel bad for him. Um, because then later on, right when everyone looks like they're going to die because the truck's dead and they're like, we have to, there's nothing here. We got to, there is a dead end. We're all going to fucking die. And then out of the ground comes an identical looking old man who's just like, yo, I'm, I think his name is Tiberius. I don't know. I didn't fucking write it down. But uh, he's like, I'm Tiberius. Get in the hole. I'm going to save you. I'm, I'm grandfather's brother. And you're just like, whoa and so they get in the hole and that's where the issue ends because you know they were driving around and it's like oh no monsters and then now they're in a hole um yeah you were gonna say something so there was no turtle i mean any of the shades could have been a turtle before they mm -hmm. transformed so i'm not saying there wasn't a turtle so you're telling me there's a chance i'm telling you there's a chance joe it's a slight chance. Actually, you know what? Let's just make it fucking canon. There was a turtle. One of the shades was a yes, turtle at this yes, point. Yes, I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> one for one, baby. Exactly. Let's go. All right. So that was Nocturne number four. If I sound a little bit like whatever about it, that's because I am. Um, <laughs> I'm losing a lot of steam with this book. Uh, I'm not really all that interested in it. It's fine. But it's not really, there's nothing about it that's really standing out to me. It, it seems very generic by the numbers, kind of whatever. And I'm so I'm kind of honestly, like whenever this first arc wraps up, I'm thinking I'm probably going to drop it as a monthly and I'm just going to wait for it in trade if I hear good stuff about it. Um, but Noctera, uh, I'm not too hot on, not, not feeling too hot on it right now. Okay, moving on to another number four. Uh, we have the Swamp Thing number four, Joe. So tell me what happened in this one. Okay, in this one, um, new Swamp Thing guy wakes up, and you know there's the two Ivies, there's old Swamp Thing, there's the classical bad guy dude, I forget their name, and they're like, welcome, Jeffrey, welcome to heaven. Um, and <laughs> Welcome, Jeffrey. And Jeff is like, holy shit, this place is great, look at all the weed. Um, and... That is both metaphorical weed, <laughs> weed weed, and also just weeds in general. Um, and, and they're like, okay, Jeffrey, welcome to heaven. And this is heaven. And oh my god, Joe, can you hear me? Did you disconnect? Motherfucker. You, are you back? Were you there? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. You Hello. disconnected. Did you hear me freak out? I didn't hear you freak out. I just heard a long pause. <laughs> I was like, motherfucker. Anyway, back to Jeffrey being in heaven. <laughs> back to Jeffrey. <laughs> the, the Ivies are like, boy, do we have a job for you. They're like, okay, somebody's trying to kill the forest. You got to protect it and figure out your powers. We're not going to tell you how to do it. Just go with the flow, man. Feel it. And he's like, oh, my God, why is my penis a tree trunk? Um... <laughs> I would be concerned as well, Jeffrey. And then he goes, okay, time to learn. And then the issue ends. Mm. Um, heaven. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it doesn't take place in heaven. It takes place in the green. But I mean, I guess that's technically, mm -hmm. like, if mm -hmm. you're a tree hugger, mm -hmm. I could be heaven mm -hmm. for you. Um, but yeah, uh, Jeffrey, or as he's known in the book, Levi, um, he's, uh, you know, he's still in the green and Jen is still in the green from the last time uh, they kind of like got transported in. Jason Woodrow is the name of the villain guy that you were, uh, blanking on the name as well. Um, and he's the one that's like chauffeuring Jen around in the green. He's just like, Hey, I'm going to bring it to your friend. You can trust me. I'm kind of crazy. Uh, and you're just like, Oh, okay. Um, but so Levi ends up, because he's talking with uh, Alec Holland, who was the Swamp Thing, one of the, he wasn't the original, as I found out reading the Alan Moore stuff, which is so fucking good. I love it so much. Um, but uh, he, he ends up talking with him and connecting about some stuff. And he's like, dude, you got to connect with the green. And he does. And there's this awesome page where Swamp Thing puts his hand into the ground. And, like, it shows, like, rings, kind of like tree rings in the ground. But in each of those tree rings is a different era of Swamp Thing. And, like, one of them is a panel from, um, 
you know, like the first Swamp Thing from the 70s. One of them is a panel from the Alan Moore rendition of Swamp Thing from uh, the 80s. And then I'm assuming the next couple of rings are just the different iterations of Swamp Thing after that. Um, but it's a really cool page that pays homage to all the different eras of Swamp Thing. And I'm like, yo, that's cool. Um, and so after he does that, Alec Cohen is like, all right, I've taught you what you need to know to connect with the green. The rest is up to you. And then he starts disappearing and he's like, what, what's happening? And it's like, dude, I'm just a memory of the green. I'm not actually here. I'm, I'm fucking dead. And he's like, oh, okay, bye. And he's like, yeah, bye. And he just fucking pieces out of there and dissolves into nothingness. Um, but so uh, Levi then meets up with Jen. He finds Woodrow and her, and she's trying to get away from him because he's being a fucking creep. And he's like, come back, Clarice. And she's like, get the fuck away from me. And then Levi appears out of, like, nothing. Like, he, I think he managed to transport himself through the green. Like, you know, uh, he dis uh, dissolves himself, and then the vines appear somewhere else, and, like, they grow into a swamp thing, and he does that. And I'm like, yo, that's awesome! And he picks up Jen, who's kind of, like, fainted, and he's just like, Woodrow, fuck off. And Woodrow's just like, we don't have any history, dude. I'm just trying to help, all right? I'm not a bad guy. Just trying to do my part. And he's like, I have the memories of the green. I've seen what you've done, you fucking maniac. Stay away from me. And he's like, okay, okay. I'll come back later. So he, he pieces the fuck out, and so does uh, Levi. He, like, kind of ethereally teleports himself and Jen back out of the green into their bodies in the real world. Um, which is, you know, they're finally back into the real world, and they're just kind of, like, processing all the crap that's just happened and then as they're going away from the lab a bunch of people in hazmat suits arrive sometime later and are kind of like sweeping the area and they're like then they didn't really leave any trace and the guys one of the guys in a hazmat suit is like yeah almost no trace and he pulls up a bag that has a flower in it and he's like get this to you know blah 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 for analyzing or whatever and he calls mr pilgrim the guy from i don't know issue one or issue two that i had mentioned before that seems like a villain of some kind and he calls him up and he's just like hey uh mr pilgrim we got some shit uh we got a swamp thing sample for you and he's like cool and then he hangs up on him and then he calls someone else and he's like all right i got something that you might be interested in amanda waller and I'm like, why? Uh, more Suicide Squad? And the final page reveal is a very widely drawn Amanda Waller being like, cool. And like, Peacekeeper and uh, a couple other characters in the background. And I'm just like, why is why is there so much Suicide I mean, I know there's so much Suicide Squad because there's a fucking movie coming out about them. But like, why? <laughs> so you're telling me I'm two for two? Essentially, Joe, I'm telling you, you're spot on two for two. Um, congratulations. I fucking knew it. It's all about the weed. Mm hmm. Always about the weed. That's all that Jason Woodrow does in the green. He just smokes weed all day, every day. Probably part of the reason why he's so fucking psychotic because he's never not stoned. Um, and then we come to. I feel like this might be one of the easiest ones. Hey! Nah, whatever. It's Batman number 109, Joe. So tell me, what do you think happened in this one? Okay, okay. I can do this. Um, shit. Now, this is, the thing is, this requires me to remember what you talked about. I can give you a recap of what happened I would appreciate beforehand. that. Yeah, yeah, why not? Okay, so like, this is the arc that's following... Um, it's kind of like predating the magistrate stuff. So like in the previous issues, Batman infiltrated the Unsanity Collective and talked to Miracle Molly, who was like, yo, you should, uh, you know, try and let go of your past. And that way you might be a more productive person to try and help Gotham's future. And Scarecrow right now is trying to like incite fear in the city. So that way the city will then turn to Simon Saint, who is trying to get his magistrate program up and running off the ground uh and he just brought in uh sean mahoney to become peacekeeper 01 the first part of his sentinel program okay and that's kind of like where we left off in the last issue okay um in this in this issue scarecrow really doesn't do much he kind of just sits around and orders people what to do um peacekeeper does a lot of stuff he has his first conflict with batman and at first he's kind of just all talk and then things get a little crazy. They get a little dancing, a little tango, if you may. And um, Batman says, don't fuck with me. Um, 
But before, but after that, he kind of reflects, and he's like, damn, what the hell am I doing with my life? He visits the graves of, you know, the Waynes, and he's like, daddy, mommy, what should I do? I'm a bad man. And then he <laughs> and then he goes to Alfred, and Alfred kind of gives him a bitch slap. He's like, suck the fuck up, man. Come on. We got shit to do. He's like, damn it, you're right, Alfred. And then, um... He, he meets up with Selena Kyle, and they decide to do the dirty. Um, drawn greatly in this book. It looks great. It's very surprisingly, I, I didn't, I wouldn't picture, you know, Bruce Wayne as a veiny man, but his member is quite veiny, to say the least. Um, and it ends with him being like, damn it, what am I doing? I'm dicking around with Selena. I got to go you know figure out what the hell's happening in the city and then the last thing is scarecrow being like hey, 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 the plan is in motion mm. okay if this were still being written by tom king a lot of that might have been very correct uh but this is post tom king so um alfred is dead oh, and Selena is out of the book <laughs> oh god yep um yeah selena is nowhere it, not in uh, these books right now, um, but everything is drawn very great because it's still um, uh, uh, Jorge Jimenez on art, and it's just fucking immaculate, everything that's going on in these books. But uh, you are right, Scarecrow does take a bit of a backseat. He's kind of just like, he's just kind of like a presence in this issue. He's kind of just been a presence throughout most of the issues. Um, he's not really there there. Um but so he's kind of just inciting the fear in Batman, uh, who has just come back from the Insanity Collective, gets suited up, and he heads over to Simon Saint to try and get out of him the information about Scarecrow. And while he's on his way, he tells Barbara, uh, who's Oracle at this time, to contact Ghostmaker because he's going to need backup probably. So while he's going off and doing that, we then cut to Ghostmaker and Harley Quinn, who are currently working together just to kind of keep tabs on everything. Um, and... While they're keeping tabs, you know, Ghostmaker invites her into his... I forget what he calls it, but it's basically his version of the Batcave that he's like, yeah, my Batcave is better, it's cooler. And then Harley Quinn is like, you, you guys are always fighting over shit. And he's like, yeah. And then she's like, what's this? It's Spinosaurus. It's like what Batman had in his cave, but bigger. And I'm just like, you gotta fucking calm down, Ghostmaker Jesus. <laughs> um... But so he's kind of, he's like, he gets out of Ghostmaker suit, still wearing like a hood to protect his face. He's like, yeah, only like two people have ever seen my face and like three people know my name. And she's like, that's weird. He's like, it's who I am. And she's like, okay. Um, but he puts on like a, a little uh, snazzy little suit and offers her some champagne. And she's just like, are you still trying to kill me? Or are you trying to have sex with me? And he's like, I'm not quite sure right now. For now, I'm just observing you. And she's like, all right, I guess I can handle that. <laughs> and I'm like, this is very strange. Um, but while they're having a little back and forth stuff, uh, the gardener shows up, who's another new character that uh, James Tynan invented for this run. And she kind of appears and she's got like similar to Ivy powers. She's got like these hounds that are made of plants. Uh, I don't really know what she does because she doesn't like conjure them. They're just with her when she appears. Um, and she talks to Harley Quinn. She's just like, hey, um, Poison Ivy, she's underground Gotham. She's doing shit. Uh, you're going to have to go and talk to her. And she's like, no. And she's like, okay, cool. Take this flower. When you want to get in contact with her, c c like tell this flower that you want to speak to her and like it'll bring me to you and then I'll bring you to her. And she's like, okay. And then Gardner kind of pieces out. And I'm just like, all right, um, weird, but that's fine. So then we cut back to Batman, who's shown up at Simon Saint's place. Uh, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Simon Saint kind of has like this uh, little fuckboy guy with him. Um, I don't know what his... I think his name is Ricardo, actually. Uh, but so he's basically like an assistant slash bodyguard for Simon Saint, because Simon Saint is like this weaselly old guy. Um, and so Batman shows up and lifts Simon Saint up by like the, the shirt collar, and he's like, I need Scarecrow's location, and I need it now. And he's just like, um, no ricardo and ricardo comes in and one of his arms is bionic and so he like punches batman and batman's all like what the hell because he doesn't realize that he's got a mechanical arm and then the sleeve rips and he's like oh okay so ricardo tries to punch batman batman catches it 
Ricardo tries to say something snazzy to him, and while he's saying that, Batman just fucking spin kicks his head and knocks him out for the count. And I'm just like, yeah, serves you right, bitch. Uh, and Simon Sane is just like, oh, um, that would suck. If he was my only backup plan, and then out of the shadows, fucking Peacekeeper 01 emerges after because Sean Mahoney's gotten the bionic leg and arm to replace all of his stuff, and he's looking very similar to how he did in uh, Future State because he's got the mask and the suit and everything. And he's like, Hello, Batman, meet my, you know, the new alpha dog in the town. And Batman's like, Fuck this guy. And so the issue ends with them kind of fighting. Um, and it's just sort of like, who will win in the next issue or whatever. So that's uh, that's what happens in that book. Two and a half for three. Not bad. I'm happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you two and a half for three with that. But um, yeah, so I'd say Swamp Thing and Batman, I'm liking them both. Again, the Swamp Thing, very good. Batman, I think is pretty solid. The art is incredible. The story, I'm still kind of like... I don't know, because this is like part four of the story, and I still feel like we're either just getting out of the beginning setup stuff, or like still very much in the early second act, so I don't know when this is going to wrap up or how it is, but it seems like it's it's a really long story, and it's taken its sweet-ass time to do anything, um, which could be great looking back on it in a couple of issues, or it could be not great, so I don't know, we'll see. And then Noctera, I, whatever. But let's look forward to next week, Joe. What are you picking up next week? The Spider's Shadow number three. Oh, hell yeah. I forgot that was coming out next week. I'm so excited for that book. I love that book so much. So ready for that. Is that it for That's you? That's it. I'm picking up that. I'm picking up 100 bags and 100 boards. And... My box is coming in for my comics. I am official. I'm certified. I am a comic-er, if that's the proper terminology. <laughs> yes, the exact proper terminology is I am a comic-er. And you had to put a little bit of a, like a little bit of a breath between comic and er. So you got that perfectly. Um, I'm picking up as well Spider Shadow number three, and in addition to that. Wonder Woman, number 773. We're back to Norse Wonder Woman, which I'm so fucking excited for. And uh, Geiger, number three, another image comic. So, um, hopefully, good stuff all around. I am excited. This week was kind of, you know, kind of nice to have a little break. And then I'm going to build up. We're getting back in the spider's shadow. And then who knows what's after that. But it's summertime. Mm -hmm. It's comic time. And... It's going to be good. We got good stuff coming. And let's end it there. Joe, get us out of here. All right, everyone. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. You know all the normal YouTube shiznit. Um, read some comics. Again, they're pretty good. Batman, again, Tiny Run. I'm loving it right now. It's, it's, it's a good time. The Swamp Thing, also pretty good. Again, that's only four issues long, so, and it's a 10-issue miniseries, so you can hop in on that right now and it's gonna be great um yeah and i guess that'll be it from us be sure to tune next week for spider shadow wonder woman and geiger and with all that being said we shall say we love you we'll leave you and goodbye <laughs>